The song Black Hole Sun is a love ballad to the apocalypse. I'm just going to come right out and say that. This is one of the greatest songs ever, in my opinion. Many, many people love this song. It's got like over 13 and a half or 14 million views on YouTube or whatever. Uh, back before YouTube and Pandora and all of that, uh, we listen to this song all of the time. The crazy thing is nobody knows what it's about. It's really kind of a mystery. Even Chris Cornell, who wrote the song, the lead singer for uh, Soundgarden, uh, he wrote the song and people are like, this song's amazing. This song's so good. It really resonated with a lot of people. Many people love this song and they don't really know why they love this song. So they asked Chris Cornell, hey, what's it mean, man? You got to tell us. Tell us a secret. What's the song about? And he's like, I don't know. I, I, I heard the words Black Hole Sun. This is Chris Cornell speaking. He says that he, he heard the words Black Hole Sun on the news, tuned out everything else, and those three words resonated with him so much that he wanted to write an entire song about it. And according to him, it's just, it seems to be like his explanation is that it's a, it's a random words that he strung together. But if we look at this song closely and we gather the facts and the clues, we can tell that this song was inspired, right? Um, I mean... If, if, if what Chris Cornell is, is saying about the song, um, then I believe it was truly something that was written from inspiration. And I feel like many of us, uh, musicians, artists, people who are creatively minded, we can tap into truths that we're not consciously aware of from the energies of our world, from the ether itself, uh, from just listening to the earth. And I believe that Quite often this happens in the music industry that they, that they do this. Now, sometimes they actually know. Sometimes they don't know, but others do know what they're actually talking about, like their producers or, you know, the people that hire them and manage them and whatnot. So they, they make these music videos that match the real meanings. Now, here's, here's my thing before we get into the actual video. And thanks, everyone, for being so patient with the technical difficulties earlier. Um, I, I believe that... This song is written in truth. And we're going to break down this entire music video right now. And um, where that truth comes from, it matters not to people like myself. Truth is truth wherever you get it from, right? All right. So with that being said, I totally believe that this is a love song to the apocalypse, that this person who is writing the song, the singer of the song, or the character in the song, um, that they're expressing their frustrations at the world that we live in today and that they cannot wait. They sing a love song up to the sky, knowing that the apocalypse is inevitable and asking it to hurry, asking it to come get here so that the world can change because the world's kind of terrible. Now, check this out. <laughs> I do see you guys in the chat too. So if you want to say what's up, you totally can. Uh, Sean actually is in the chat and says, I remember the first time that you did this song. Yeah, I broke the song down before. Unfortunately, I got a copyright strike. I, I might, might have used some of the music or something, but we're going to really break it down uh, even more so than the first time. This is the very first image that you'll see in the music video, right? They sh they've just flashed these images of hills. Have you ever seen this, uh, this music video and you've seen this little opening where they show these weird looking hills, but they only just flash them just real quick, like three or four of them, right? Let me show you what I mean, right? They'll, they'll show you this one and then they just fade out, and then they show you this one, and then they fade out, and then they show you this hill, they f and then it fades out. This is really weird to me because this whole, this whole song focuses on the sky, right? Even the lead singer throughout the song is just staring up at the sky because he's singing a love song to the sky god that eventually, you know, every once in a while comes back and returns or wakes up from his slumber and causes the apocalypse, right? So I find it really interesting that they show these strange looking hills. I want to go back to that first hill real quick. Now I've shown this before. This is so weird looking. I don't know what these are off to the side. At first I thought maybe it was like a caravan or some people traveling or something, maybe a guy with a cane or possibly a couple of trees. I'm not sure. But then I started to look at the slopes and everything and I'm like, you know what? This looks like a shoulder. This looks exactly like um, a petrified titanic being that other people are walking around climbing on. And in fact, if that's true, the band actually stands on the shoulder of the giant and sings their entire song. Let me show you what I mean. If you take this image and flip it and then you copy it, right? Let me make this a little bit uh, better for everyone. All right. We'll do picture share. Boom. All right. Cool. So let's do this. 
I just want to make sure you see the the entire thing there. All right, sweet. Well, instead, what we're going to do is this right here. I'll just widen this. I made this in Photoshop. So what I did is I took the initial picture and I just filled in the gaps. And I flipped it around and I put the exact opposite mirroring it on the other side, right? And what does that look like to you? To me, it looks like the chest and the neck and the shoulder muscles of a titanic being, right? And that's how we start this music video off. And they only flash this real quick. Now, to people like myself, this was a fun Easter egg for me to put together. All right, cool. So with that being shown, uh, that's how we're starting a music video off, right? Showing you possible mud fossils of petrified titans that once walked all the legends and the myths talk about the giants and the titans that turned to stone, right? So we've got a possible reference to those there. Now that we go to this other hill, this just flashes for a moment. This also kind of resembles, you know, possible body parts. If we're going off of this one being a body part, it stands to reason these could be too. This could be like someone's knee up in the, under the dirt or whatnot. But that's how it starts off. Then, then they show you the red sky. Oh, hey, what's up, Aaliyah? Aaliyah's in the chat, says sending her love. Thank you. Sarah Ann says good evening. Right on, wounded angel. All right, sweet. Thanks for all the support, everyone. All right, let's move on and let's tackle some of the symbolism. They show you the red sky, right? This song is about the apocalypse. This song is asking the apocalypse to come. At the beginning of the song, they'll show you the red sky and then they'll show you the sun and how the sun is correlated to uh, the apocalypse, right? So in the next slide, we see the sun, but then the sun is, dis the the sun is eclipsed. And what's it eclipsed by? It's eclipsed by the black hole sun or the black hole there is a hole in our sky that opens up from time to time allowing our world to depressurize and this is what causes um you know a huge cataclysm uh usually one by water one by fire but there's this hole that swallows up the sun when the sun gets to this point in the sky there's what's known as the great conjunction uh, the moon will be there, the sun will be there, and then, of course, Rahu, or the missing piece of the sky, will be there as well. This is the black hole that opens up. This is the all-seeing eye. This is the eye in the sky. Uh, the sky is dark already, and then after all of this, it starts to turn red. Why does it turn red, right? It turns red because there's, um, I believe that there is hydrogenated, um, or I'm sorry, there is ionized hydrogen outside of our world in what we call in academics the plasmasphere. All right, so the black hole sun makes its first appearance, swallowing up the actual sun. They're not singing to the, the focal point in the sky. They're not singing to the sun itself. They're singing to and, and asking for this false sun, right? This, I mean, it, it is a sun, but it's a black sun. It's a dark sun. The sun that we have right now is a focal point where all of the light is redistributed, coming down and forming daylight or daytime on the surface of our world. That sun will be seen as like a planet or Nibiru or something, you know, trying to crash down onto the earth, um, an eyeball. It's, it's depicted as so many different things, right? But traditionally, it's known as the dark sun or the black hole sun. Now, the band, like I said, the whole time, they're standing on this little mound, which I'll show you in a bit. Is It looks like it's connected to that petrified giant that they're standing on. They're looking up under a blue sky. They're looking up at the sky and they're calling for the apocalypse. Meanwhile, down below them... Um, oh, you know what? Let me get the lyrics up on the screen for you too real quick. There we go. At least we can see the lyrics. Okay, so the song starts off and he says, in my eyes, indisposed. So in my eyes, meaning to me, right? He's indisposed, meaning he's not, he's not, um, he's, he's sick of this, basically, is what indisposed means. It means you're sick. It means you're not well and you're not supportive of whatever's going on or you can't participate. You're, in, you're indisposed. So he's indisposed at what? The world, as it is today. As he says, indisposed, it shows you this group of religious fanatics and religious people or people who symbolize the world's various, you know, major religions, at least some of them. And he says, I'm indisposed. I don't like this. I'm sick of this world, right? Then they show you some other symbols here, right? We're going to get into these guys here in a bit, but they show you this hill in the background where they chose to have this. And then they have these red flowers, red flowers typically represent the the eye in the sky that opens up like a carnation or a red rose um, it's it's some sort of a red flower in the sky why because it opens up and it blooms outward and it, it gets kind of blurry around the edges as the um, as the plasma swirls down into our world 
So it's symbolized quite often by a red flower in the media. So he says, in my eyes, indisposed. In my eyes, I'm sick of this, right? In my mind, I'm tired of this world. This world's messed up. Look at all, look at, here's a good example of why it's messed up. In disguises, no one knows, right? Now, this is a brand new sentence. So the first sentence, first thing he's telling us is he's sick of this world. He's tired of it. In the second sentence, in disguises that no one knows, hides the face and lies the snake. So we're, t we're talking about the hole that opens up in the sky. Some people call it Nibiru. Some people call it the Sipapu. Some people call it the place of the crossing, the entrance, whatever it may be. It's when our world depressurizes, okay? And uh, creatures can come in and we can leave. That's the only time. That's when the doors open. So he says, in my eyes, I'm indisposed. I don't like this world. In disguises that no one knows, hides the face. The face is the face up there in the sky, okay? Sometimes it's seen as the mouth of God opening. Sometimes it's seen as a face itself with snakes coming off of it like Medusa's face. Um, so up there in our sky right now is hiding that face, is hiding that hole that's up there in the sky. It's, it's invisible. It's known as um, a celestial body that's referred to as Rahu or the missing one. So hides the face and lies the snake. The snake is referred to as the red plasma, the hydrogenated plasma. That plasma, when it comes in, into our world to ground itself, it's, it's on a cleaning mission. It's here to clean house. It's here to destroy things, okay? And then we get the apocalypse and a huge worldwide electrical storm. Now this guy, they're showing uh, this, this guy who clearly represents Judaism. And he also shows these people's faces when he's talking about hiding the face and the snake lies and stuff. So I can see why people internalize this song instead of looking at it literally. Even Chris Cornell was like, I don't know how anyone could believe that this was literal, right? But he doesn't even know what it's about. So I'd say that's a possibility that this is actually literal, that so many people are just grasping at straws. And I feel like we do this with many songs. We've been conditioned to internalize everything they show us. And so nowadays they're like, wow, we don't, they don't believe us whenever we just hand it to them. So let's just hand it to them. Let's just show them and let's see who can figure it out and who internalizes everything and makes it this internal struggle or whatever that they can relate to, right? Which there's truth to that. However, I don't feel like that's always the case. There's always anomalies and exceptions. All right. So up there in the sky is a missing body, right? Chris Cornell, the writer, he's tired of this world. Up there in the sky is this hiding face where these snakes lie. This is the snakes of Eden and stuff. Then you see this guy start to smile and his smile gets bigger and bigger. And then they show another guy and this guy smiles. His, his, his facial expressions are exaggerated. All of them are as they go through this apocalyptic event. Okay. Once that black hole sun appears, all of the regular people of the world have really strange expressions and they seem overly happy. Okay. And it says, uh, <laughs> hold on, let me go back to this guy. I want to talk about why these expressions are overly happy. There is an abundance of nitrogen in the air that we breathe in our atmosphere. Okay. Uh, it's not mostly oxygen. It's mostly nitrogen. Now, whenever you apply a strong electrical current to the existing nitrogen that's already up there in the sky, it has a strong potential to create many other byproducts chemically. One of those is nitrous oxide. So I believe that there will be pockets or, or gas clouds of nitrous oxide that are created up in the air and then they, f they, they come down in the winds and stuff. And, and some people who are hit by those nitrous oxide uh, clouds um, they get high basically. And the effects of nitrous oxide, it, it acts, it does a few different things. One we'll talk about in an, in a, an upcoming video. One, it makes you forget things. Okay. It induces amnesia, especially in strong quantities Two, it's called laughing gas. It makes people crack up at the dumbest things and they can't stop laughing. They just continue laughing. Right. Um, and that's a clear sign that you're, you're getting high from nitrous oxide. So that this nitrous oxide is created up in the sky whenever the plasma comes in and electrifies the atmosphere. These pockets of, of uh, nitrous oxide clouds, you know, might hit major cities and whatnot. So people will start cracking up and laughing at the end of the world, which I think is awesome. <laughs> I love that because people, I mean, it's easy to be negative about the end of the end of the world. Let's do something challenging. Let's take it with, let's, let's, uh, 
let's be happy. <laughs> I mean, like, even if you're not, it seems to me that nature has a sense of humor and it won't allow you to be afraid at the end of the world. Who knows? I don't know. Anyways, these people are clearly high. They're, they're just, their facial expressions are off the charts. <clears throat> and they start stretching, like their face starts to stretch out. That's another possibility too. Um, this plasma, the hydrogenated plasma, the, the ions that electrify our atmosphere have the potential to create um, loose bonds in your carbon of your body and therefore uh, allowing people, animals and other, other things, depending on where they are and their location and, and some other factors, but it has the potential to allow physical bodies and and other things to stretch, to st actually stretch out. All right. Anyways, so these guys, these guys are all laughing. Their, their smiles get bigger and bigger and bigger, I believe, because this nitrous oxide cloud hits them during the beginning of this apocalypse. You're also seeing a white house in the background. I want to mention that real quick too, because you'll see it later. The white house is representative of, uh, these enclosed worlds, okay? On the inside, they're referred to as the black houses, right? Or the dark cities. That's because they're underneath an enclosure that is keeping the glory of the heavens away so that we can't see space and all of its bright and beauty, um, beautifulness or whatever. Um, but the, it's black on the inside. It's a dark place unless you have that focal point, in which case it's dark sometimes. But on the top, it's white. On the top, it looks like ice. And on the top, it's t totally opposite color. So to, to those living on the outside looking down, they would see a white roof to each world, basically. And if you're on the inside looking up, you see black. All right, so anyways, let's move on. So these people are clearly hit by a nitrous oxide cloud. Um, you got the band <laughs> on like the shoulder of this petrified titan where things are growing on it. And then he says, um, in my eyes, in, dispose, in disguises, no one knows. Um, hides the face and lies the snake, the sun and the sun in my disgrace. So this hiding face is directly related to the sun, but it's not the focal point sun. It's the black sun, the black hole sun that they're, the, the whole song is, is being sung to, right? It's a love song to the black hole sun. Um, and then it says... Oh, and then it's got this guy, you know, he's doing the nitrous oxide effect. And then it says boiling heat, summer stench. And they show you a pot that's boiling over, possibly representing the ocean. I don't know because we'd have to have more context as to what it represents. Thankfully, they show you a dead fish that can't breathe. That's just sitting there outside of the symbolic ocean. Now, why is it a symbolic ocean? Because we're talking about the apocalypse and one of the signs of the apocalypse, one of the prophecies is that the, is that the last time we had a similar event, the oceans boiled. People witnessed, survivors reported and wrote down that they saw the oceans boiling, right? Now, there's different ways that the ocean could boil. One is through direct heat, right? If the sun, if that focal point, um, if it's, if it's focus gets smaller, our days will get hotter. And if that happens, the smaller that focal point gets, the less daytime we will have, the less daylight we will have, and the hotter the daytime itself will be. And it will get hotter and hotter as it goes around in, in, in a spiral towards the middle of the world. Um, and that has the potential to burn things, that whatever's in the path of the sun during this particular apocalyptic cycle, the sun itself would actually burn things. Now, that would also include the ocean because the sun would travel across the oceans as well. So on one hand, the water could burn um, or boil, I mean, unless it's me. If it's like mac and cheese, that's what my mac and cheese looks like. It's burnt. I don't know how, but it does it. Anyway, um, one way is that the water could boil by um, extreme heat from the sun. The other way is that there could be chemicals being released. And on top of that, the depressurization effect that's happening, rapid depressurization, also could cause the waters to boil. Um, and they don't even have to be hot. They could just look like they're boiling. So we also have this dead fish, right? Um, fish, one of the signs of the apocalypse is that many different animals will lose uh, they'll get confused, okay? S many animals are different than, than many humans, unfortunately, these days because uh, they, they can sense the currents, the electromagnetic currents that nature provides, that our world provides, and we have lost being in touch with that. So whenever that electromagnetic current, those currents that the animals follow, whether they be in the water or in the sky, when it goes into flux and it starts fluctuating, you know, which is one of the signs before the apocalypse, 
When it goes into flux, the animals go into flux. They leave their normal traditional routes that they follow. They end up getting beached and they come up onto the beaches and stuff. Uh, birds will go in huge groups the totally wrong way and freeze or die in some storm or something. So we see that happening a lot. Now, this lady's clearly got the, the nitrous oxide gla uh, gas as well. Oh, another thing too that they show this in the movies. If you're a victim of the nitrous oxide clouds, one, another sign is that you won't be able to feel pain, okay? Because it, it, it takes away pain. Nitri they use it as laughing gas and um, to basically keep uh, patients from feeling pain. So, for example, like you saw in the color out of space when that lady, the mom, was like chopping carrots or whatever and she was totally just out of it staring off into space. She accidentally cuts off her own fingers, didn't even realize it, and then she's like, hey, who wants dinner? And her fingers are all missing, right? Remember that scene? That's because she was hit by a nitrous oxide cloud. Now, another thing is it makes people sick. It can make people sick. Um, the depressurization on top of everything, there's a lot of elements here that will make people nauseous. So a lot of people will get sick. We don't see that in the video, but I want to throw that out there. All right, boiling heat and summer stench, right? This is... I believe in reference to one of the apocalyptic cycles that happens and comes during the summer solstice, right? We've got one on the winter solstice and the other one, on the other hand, on the summer solstice. So boiling heat and summer stench stuff is getting all rotten and stuff in this extreme heat. Beneath the, beneath the black, the sky looks dead. Once again, they're referring to being inside or underneath the enclosed world that we live in, looking up at the black sky, it looks dead. It doesn't look like it's full of life, right? Space should be full of life. It should be full of light and energy and sparkly and beautiful, you know? Um, we all knew this since we were children. Oh, hey, Jedi, right on. Thank you. Super appreciate it. All right, so beneath the black, the sky looks dead. So he's sad, right? He's like, man, I'm done living here. I'm ready for the apocalypse to happen. I'm ready for a change to come. Call my name through the cream. Right? He's still talking to the sky. He's asking the sky or this hole up there in the sky to call his name through the cream. The cream is um, a reference to space. Space in its true form, if you were to leave this world and really see space, it would be cream colored. It would be white. It would be um, pearlescent or opalescent. It, it would not be a black, dark void as it seems to us down here. So he says, call my name through the cream. And then you see this guy, representative of, um, they wear whites because uh, they pay homage to the beings that are from space. And typically those beings are described as having what I call a fantasoid white color to them. So this guy is uh, representing those beings that came down and then they feed the sheep. They feed the lambs. They feed the little baby people that live in these worlds, in, in the checkerboard realm of the spaces beyond us. So he says, call my name through the cream. So shout at me from space, basically from the sky, and I'll hear you scream again. So when this opening up in the sky opens up, when that, when that godlike mouth, okay, up in the sky, whatever it is, opens up, it makes a sound. When this event happens and our world depressurizes, sounds are created that sounds and is described, you know, differently from different people across our realm. Um, but it makes a very loud sound. Some people describe it as screaming. Some people describe it as a yell. Um, and, and how does it make a sound, right? Well, one, you've got the explosion of every, of our atmosphere literally just blowing its top, right? So that's going to create sound. On the other hand, you also have worldwide earthquakes, which are going to create extremely low frequency waves, which will go up, hit the barrier of the firmament above and then go back down and reverberate right back off the ground and it'll go back and forth like that. Um, which is possibly one of the ways that people actually float through sonic levitation or acoustic levitation. But anyways, this this experience, this apocalyptic event creates a song. It creates, creates a sound and that's what he's saying. He's saying, I want to hear that sound. I want you to sing to me. I want you to call my name. I want you to let me know it's time. He can't wait for this to happen. As you can see, he's, he's pretty seriously staring up at the sky like seriously, you need to happen like now, which I can relate to. I feel like many of you can. That's why we're doing this song. All right. So the sun goes back around. You see it line up with the, the black hole sun, the sun, the, the black hole sun, the open, the, the hole in the sky eats the sun away, right? Because they can't be basically in the same place at the same time. 
um, because one is created by the other. All right, so here you can see they're sort of playing on the neck, right? Like if that was me in the background as the hill, like the band, maybe they're sitting on like a knee if I had my knee up or something like that. So they say, black hole sun, won't you come? Won't you come? Everyone looks up, right? Why? Because this is literally an event that happens up in the sky where people look up to see what's happening on the cosmic level and they freak out and they don't know how to describe it. Why? Because we've forgotten all about this event. We as a, as a society uh, have forgotten our past. We've forgotten the fact that they are, there are cyclical resets that occur. And whenever people experience it, because they, they are willingly ignorant of it, they don't want to hear about it. Okay. Try to talk to someone about the end of the world. I'm getting all passionate now because woo, it's like, it's, it's the most, I mean, it's like one of the top 10 most important subjects you could probably ever discuss in my opinion, for me at least. And these people don't want to hear about it. They don't want to hear about dying. They don't want to hear about the world being decimated. They don't want to hear about everything that we have built and, and raised up, uh, being torn down and destroyed. And they have to rebuild everything and they have to try to actually survive and not depend upon going to Walmart and the government and stuff, you know? So they say, black hole sun, won't you come and wash away the rain, right? Two, twofold. One, it's talking about a play on the word reign, as in the reign of the king or the reign of the queen or the reign of the president or the governments or whatever, right? They want, he wants the system to be washed away. And I, I can totally relate to that. The other thing is literally it's going to take away our weather. Okay. This event sucks up everything into the sky. The atmosphere is pulled up. Uh, the world is depressurized. When you don't have pressure, you don't have weather. So the pressure is gone, right? Um, right now we're under pressure, like, like the song under pressure, which is what that's about. Uh, so the, the rain will be gone, right? There won't be any more rain. It'll be like fog, like mist and stuff because the atmosphere is pulled apart so quickly that it, it mystifies. <laughs> it truly mystifies. Anyway, uh, moving forward. So we get to this Nicole Kidman looking chick and she's got her Joker face on. This is where all the Joker stuff comes from too, right? And people laughing so much that they die in movies or people that can't stop laughing or there's some kind of a laughing plague. I believe that's a reference to the nitrous oxide clouds that hit random places, right? And some people don't have gas masks and they don't know how to like, you know, they don't know what to do. So they just breathe it in. Um, and it says to wash away the rain. All right. So she's, she's doing her exaggerated sort of plastic joker face. And as you can see, there's some of these uh, red flowers behind her as well, too. Now, we get to this, these people right here. This lady right here, she, this is, she's wearing this weird belt that's connected to this old-fashioned machine that vibrates really hard. That vibration, a long time ago, they thought would like force your body to move and you would work out without having to do any work. You just stand there and let this machine shake you, right? So it's interesting symbolically because people float up into the sky and get sucked up into the sky. They literally lose their weight from the shaking and the vibrations that are happening. And through um, acoustic levitation, they lose weight from being shaken by, by the song that is sung by the, the cosmic sky god or whatever, right? And then, she, of course, she's wearing red, representing the apocalypse. There's a red room. There's many red rooms in this whole thing. And uh, the red room symbolism is representative of a changeover that happens in our world where we change from a blue sky to a red sky, where we can see what is on the other side of the sky, which is the plasma sheath or the plasma sphere or plasma tubes, whatever different ways they're referred to, right? She's also got some red flowers in her house. Now she's putting on this lipstick and they focus on this, right? It's not like she's just doing regular, regular lipstick or whatever. She's like putting on way too much lipstick. You'll see it in another slide later on. But this is also symbolic on a couple of different levels. One, her mouth literally represents like the Kronos or the, the cosmic God in the sky opening its mouth because there's a hole that opens up in our sky and its edges are red because that plasma is circling around, spiraling down. So they show you symbolically putting her face right in front of the camera and she circles the red and it gets bigger and bigger because symbolically that's what you're looking at. Also, she sort of has a killer clown from outer space kind of a vibe going on. And what I mean by that is those Anunnaki, those beings that come down, like I said, are typically a sort of phantasoid white. And it's 
it's said, like in the book of Enoch, that those beings taught us how to like apply makeup and stuff. So it may be that when these white beings put on makeup, they look like clowns, right? They're trying to beautify themselves to, to be more flush the way that we are under these conditions. Um, and so they end up looking kind of like clowns to us, basically. They look, you know, they try to look nice or whatever, but it looks kind of weird. And then we, in turn, we want to look more like them to have bigger eyes or longer neck or whatever it may be. And so we also do the same thing. We try to look like one another, which is interesting to, to impress each other. All right. So the next lyric, the next lyric says stuttering, cold and damp. I'm going to get to the picture in a minute. Stuttering, cold and damp. Steal the warm wind, tired friend. So stuttering, cold and damp. So steal the warm wind, tired friend. He's speaking to, not not to you, not to me. He's talking to his beloved. He's talking to the ring. He's talking to his precious. He's talking to that hole up in the sky. And uh, he's saying uh, that it's cold up there. And he's saying, steal the warm wind. We've got all this warm wind down here. Take it away. Suck it up. Steal the warm wind, tired friend. And he's, and that that cosmic... Um, entity is tired because it's it's sleeping. That's what it does. Is it's seen as the sleeping god. It sleeps. It goes away. It's not seen for a long time. People forget about it. But then it wakes up and it causes havoc. Right. That's what he's. That's who he's singing to right now. Now let's take a look at what's happening in the background whenever he's reading. Whenever he's singing those lyrics, he says stuttering, cold and damp. Look at these people. First, they're staring up and they're hypnotized by the chandelier. The chandelier symbolically represents the stars in our sky. And when that chandelier breaks or falls, as it sometimes does, that's symbolic of the stars falling from the sky. Because, you know, depending on uh, an alternative cosmology, the stars absolutely can fall down from the sky and look like they're falling down to the sky, leaving these red streaks behind them. Because they leave these streaks or these stripes, these red stripes, um, see how he's, this guy over here is wearing like a little tiger costume. The tiger is one of the symbols of the apocalypse itself. When those stars stripe the sky as they look like they're falling down to the ground. In reality, it's just plasma entering in through weak points in the firmament, possibly. Um, but that plasma streaks down like it, like the old school game of missile command, right? And this, it looks like the stars are just slowly coming down to the sky or spiraling down or whatever. So they're hypnotized by the sky, by the stars in the sky, which is what we do. This is what this is how I feel we look like and I used to look like when I used to look up at the stars and the sky and the black underneath part of the ceiling, just staring into it and imagining what might be out there or whatever. That's that's kind of what I get from these people. Now, while they're doing that, all these moths are flying around. You see all these moths flying around the chandelier, right? Well, there's a couple of things this reminds me of. One, the moth symbolism of the programming that these people are hypnotized, um, that, that comes up quite often. There's also the change. Moths and butterflies symbolize change. So they're circling around this chandelier, indicating it's about to change. The sky is about to change. These people are hypnotized. They don't notice. They don't seem to, to, to take into consideration the omen of this swarm of moths. That's another thing. Because it's showing insects swarming, moths are just the first ones that you'll see, but swarming is a part of the apocalypse. Why do these creatures swarm? It's because the energy and the vibration amps up in our world before the world gives birth, basically. And whenever those uh, vibrations amp up, it agitates creatures collectively. So collectively, humans, they go to war, they start rioting, they start looting and pillaging and stuff. Insects start swarming and just freaking out. Um, grasshoppers and stuff um, get really pissed off and angry. And there's a lot of swarming that's happening. And then this guy also, um, you could see he's sort of wagging his little tail there down at the bottom. See how that little tail wag? Right? He's satisfied. He's happy just staring up at the sky, not looking around, not thinking about that the world is about to literally come to an end. Anyways, let's move on. So they're staring up at the sky. You can see a moth past this lady. They're just transfixed by the, by the symbolic sky that's inside of their house here, basically. And, and it should be. The sky should be inside of their house because it's basically like looking at the ceiling. All right, so this guy, let's get to him. He's also transfixed by the television, right? While all of this is happening, while all this is happening, people don't listen to nature. They only listen to what is being told to them, right? People seek answers from anywhere but within, 
right? They, they seek answers from anywhere but Mother Nature or but, um, you know what I mean? Because we're taught that those types of things are too fringe, that they're too taboo, that you're a weirdo if, if you listen to nature or, you know what I mean, talk to trees and stuff like that. Instead, we've been programmed to sit here and just stare with a big grin on our face into television screens and, and phones and stuff, right? And also, he does have a heater on. So this is an indication um, that the, the singer of the band that Chris is referring to both apocalypses. One happens during the dead of winter. So that would explain why these people are inside their houses and um, that they've got this heater on. The other one is in the middle of summer, which is shown to us before with the boiling heat and whatnot, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Then he says, times are gone for honest men. Times are gone for honest men. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a part of every prophecy I've ever come to is before the world comes to one of its cyclical reset points, mankind is at its lowest point. Okay. Mankind, womankind, humankind, whatever, all the people have really lowered themselves to a basic condition. They're, they're selfish, they're evil, they're overly sexual, they're, they're angry all the time, they're jealous. All of the worst traits we start to exemplify right before this happens. Now to balance that out, right? Though the majority will exemplify those traits, the minority, our, um, those, those traits that the minority share, which is like goodness and peacefulness and thanksgiving and kindness and laughter and stuff, those traits amplify on the other side. It's just that that's the minority and it's smaller. So it goes um, unnoticed by most, right? They just see that people are getting weird and turning into conspiracy theorists and all kinds of weird stuff, right? It's, it's that new age movement or whatever. Anyway, so he says, times are gone for honest men. That's why he's singing this song. He wants the world to come to an end. And then it shows you like the, the religious people on TV. God, man, like I don't like mainstream religion, okay? I definitely don't like all the regurgitation where people go to the vomitorium and just get puked all over every week. Um... It, it really gets to me. I, I, uh, it's one of my, <laughs> one of my uh, thorns in my side, you might say. Anyway, so they, they show these religious people on TV. Now, religion and, and everything, whatever, hey, I came from that. So I don't want to slam it or make it sound like it's a bad thing. But the ones on TV are just the worst, right? The televangelists and people who are just doing miracles and selling you miracle water and all the really cheesy stuff. God, I can't stand it. It's terrible. And it blows my mind because people are sitting at home eating a bag of Doritos, saying hallelujah, just, just loving it. But that's not me, so that's fine. They can have that. Uh, and then he says, sometimes far too long for snakes. Double reference. One, it could be the snakes that are the people, right? The people that have that bad energy. There's an energy signature out there, believe it or not. There's a red or a blue energy signature. Um, some people will be leaning more towards what I call the blue, which is like the good energy, right? All, all the good guys. And then there's like a bad energy signature, which is the red plasma or the red energy, right? So he could be referencing the snakes that exist inside of people, which some people might say that he's talking about actual reptilians. It does show somebody with a reptilian tongue in this video. So let's, let's, let's check it out. He goes on. He says, in my shoes, a walking sleep sleepwalkers. That's what's happening in this world today. We are sleepwalking essentially. We are not a wide awake, okay? Now, let me preface that. Many of us are waking up. We're rousing from a strong slumber that has been put onto us and over us, right? Um, but when this event happens, if you thought you were awake before, wait till the plasma apocalypse, Boom. If you survive that, all the world's energy is on high. The world is filled with truth and spirit and goodness and, and all that blue uh, plasma is shooting up from Mount Maru in, in the center of the world and it changes the vibrations so strongly that telepathy is reintroduced to the world. The telekinesis and all these things that were considered to be uh, you know, fringe topics that maybe you know, there was legends of and stuff, that all becomes a reality. All of our fantasies and our myths and our legends will return in a big way. So those of you who are familiar with them, you might actually feel right at home and you might be a little bit better prepared. Believe it or not. In my shoes, a walking sleep. And then uh, it shows you this girl jump roping, just kind of jumping up and down. And she, it shows a redhead and she's got that overly exaggerated smile as well. In my youth, I pray to keep. Okay. They also don't want to stay here under the pressure conditions that are in our world today. 
Um, we shouldn't live for this tiny lifespan that we have. We should live way longer. Way longer. Oh, Jedi, right on. Hey, let me read what you got here. Jedi says, support your favorite truth tellers if you can. It's good karma. Jay brings worth it. Uh, worth in mindset. Hey, I super appreciate it. Definitely. Definitely appreciate it. Um, so what's happening here? This is a small scale example of what they're showing you the apocalypse is like, right? Or not the apocalypse, the world that we live in today, what it's like in the world we live in today. Um, in, in the world we live in today, there's a bully attitude, okay? People disregard nature. They disregard life. They don't see the connectedness that they have with the things around them. Just like children, whenever they are uh, out there with magnifying glasses trying to burn insects, right? This right here is how God is referred to sometimes, not, not really by myself, but I've seen many people refer to God, whatever God you believe in, right? Uh, in this way, as being a giant kid with a magnifying glass that is like slowly torturing everyone down here on the microscopic level. Now, I'll tell you the symbolism. The symbolism is that the magnifying glass represents the sky, the very firmament above us, right? Because the plasma that is on the other side of that glass, um, the light allows... Uh, the, plas the light from that plasma is allowed to pass through. So it's redirected, creates a focal point, which is kind of like a, you know, a laser, basically, which is, is our sun, basically. So this is a small-scale example of our sun, sun in our sky. And what does the sun do to the tiny things underneath it is it burns them, right? And if you haven't noticed, I believe, as of this video, that the sun, it seems like it's getting hotter. It seems like it's getting brighter. It seems like all the yellow is gone when it used to have yellow and even orange. Um, the moon itself is getting brighter, and the stars seem to be getting brighter. These are I look at them every single day. I check them out and I take mental notes. It also seems to me that the days are shortening. The length of time in the daylight is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it could be a clue. All right, let's go back to the song. He says, no one sings like you anymore. He's talking about this event, the depressurization and the vibrations between the earth and the sky create a song. They create a voice, the voice of God, and everyone will hear this reverberating sound all over the place. No one sings like you anymore. There's the girl in front of the White House with the post in front of it with the light on the top of the post. The post represents the blue beam. The light at the top is the eye in the sky and all of the light that comes out of that eye in the sky. And for further connection, they put red flowers all around it to symbolize the plasma. All right, so then we go back We go back to, hey, KT baby, super thank you. I appreciate it. I'm totally jumping in the chat once I'm done with the presentation too. All right, so then we go back to the, the religious guys. And uh, they're talking about how you need to believe in what they say in order to be saved, right? Well, they're all going to get sucked up into the sky. They're not going to be saved. This guy's actually wearing some shiny, scaly-looking stuff, almost like they're bragging about being related to the quote-unquote reptilians of the other worlds, okay? The otherworldly beings that are commonly referred to as reptilians. I don't like to refer them refer to them as reptilians because I don't believe that they came from lizards, just like I don't believe we came from monkeys. Um, at least I don't believe I came from a monkey. I'll say that much. I'll speak for myself. So they're singing. They're asking the event to happen. Black hole, sun, won't you come? The sky turns dark. That's also one of the signs of the apocalypse. Now they focus in on this guy. They're all asking it to happen too, right? But they misunderstand what's going to happen. Either that or because they misinterpret it that they think getting sucked up into the sky and just flying up into the hole in the sky is their version of heaven. They want it to happen too. Fine. Which also means that the leaders of these organizations might possibly have deeper insight as to the cyclical cataclysms that happen, right? Because they're asking for it to happen just like the band members are asking for it to happen. The band members want these guys to get sucked up and blown away in the sky. These guys just want their God to reappear so that they can get pats on the back for all of their, you know, converts or whatever. All right. Now in this next scene, you can see bees flying in. Uh, the bees start attacking people. So this is more insects swarming. Also bees symbolically represent plasma balls, or you could call it ball lightning, right? These, there's, 
tiny little balls of plasma will float into our world. They'll appear all over the place. Uh, plasma will appear in various forms depending on the currents and the electromagnetics of our world and where it is and wind and all kinds of other factors. But one of the ways that plasma will show up is ball lightning. It will be little tiny balls that look like pixies or, you know, little twink, uh, Tinkerbell type creatures or something like that. And remember in Labyrinth, when she tried to grab one of those little pixies and she got stung, right? It bit her and she was surprised. She's like, oh, I thought they're supposed to be nice, right? Well, that's because if you touch one of these little things symbolically, um, they're not bees. Symbolically, they represent electricity. And that's why they had these sacred bees of the times past because these bees were highly sought after um, because they created a byproduct, which is this sort of gooey slime that can be eaten, that can give you energy. Then it focuses on this chick who's clearly pretending to be like the queen of England. She's got all the purple representing royalty and stuff. And she's just swinging around. She's totally got hit by a nitrous oxide cloud. And now people start... There's all these bees everywhere. They're attacking everybody. The bees start to swarm. The, the moths are swarming. All the insects are swarming. And uh, you can see them flying around there, right? Just crazy swarms. You will see this on the news, right? If you haven't already, you'll see this more and more and more. All of these things, are you're going to start seeing more. More weather anomalies, hotter days, colder um colder days as well, actually. When you get like a, a real strong heat, it throws an imbalance and you also get a real strong cold as well. So you'll see that. Actually, that's happening now here in Colorado where I live. Today, it was like 90 degrees and we just got a winter storm warning for the weekend that it's supposed to be like a foot of snow or something, which is really weird because it's like the end of May. All right. Anyway, so there, all this swarming occurs. Uh, the bees totally take out the beekeeper. Uh, that's symbolic one for the actual swarming of the insects and insects will swarm and you know They tend to attack and stuff when they're agitated But two the bees are attacking the beekeeper. We are symbolically the bees and we have all our restraints taken away There is no system to hold us down. There are no laws. There are no rules. The bees are out of the hive That is us and then the girl in the background is doing the squatter man uh, Jesus you know, on the cross type symbolism there. And then they have these little pinwheel spinny flower dealies, right? That are spinning around. That's also symbolic. They use those and, and things like that that are symbolic of the eye in the sky because it's a pinwheel. It's it's spinning around. And that's why they, they show you things that spin around in like a spiral when they're trying to hypnotize people, right? Or change their mind about something because a lot of people's minds are affected by this event and by the electric, um, by the electricity inside of it. All right, so then they show you this girl, and she's out there trying to get a tan underneath the extreme heat. So once again, they're showing you another version of the apocalypse where the sun is extremely hot. And then they show you this, um, like, Barbie doll figure that's on uh, the barbecue. The Barbie on the barbecue <laughs> is being melted. The little girl in the background is eating some ice cream. Um, this represents us, basically. So, like, have you ever seen the remake of Willy Wonka? Eh, terrible, right? horrible horrible remake i didn't like it my boy likes it i don't like it though i'm, I'm i like the old school willy wonka <clears throat> but in the remake willy wonka whenever willy wonka first says hello to the crowd there's this weird sequence of events where all these plastic little um talking dolls and stuff dl hey welcome dl these plastic dolls all get melted in this little mini apocalypse on willy wonka's front doorsteps right so that's what they're showing you here they're not showing you like oh it's so hot you know like that this doll will burn or whatever they're saying that this is so hot that it will burn people right people will burn and some people might even melt possibly uh, so anyways, that's how hot it can get during the summer solstice apocalypse. Now they show you this girl who represents sort of one of the, the good looking elite of our world. She's also a distraction because of her good looks. And that's all, that's all she is. She's amounts to shallowness in the video, but, um, we go back to this girl and she's looking at this doll melting and then she's weirdly eating this ice cream, just kind of letting it drip all over and stuff. Right. Any reference to cream, any any reference to some sort of a white dairy product, it could be whipped cream, it could be milk, it could be ice cream or whatever, typically is a reference to space, right? Or the whiteness of space. Now they show you the black hole sun. Okay, now let's take a look at it real quick because you don't see it very long in the video. There is an outer ring and then there's an inner ring, I believe. And I did a video on this and it's about, um, it's about the unfinished pyramid and the all seeing eye, right? 
there's two rings. There's, there's two holes up there in the sky. There's the inner hole of the first level of the heavens or the firmament. And then there's a secondary hole behind that one, uh, which means that there's possibly two layers up there in the sky that um, are broken through. Now, when it shows you this hole, there's sort of like all this debris that's just getting sucked up into the sky. Uh, the people, meanwhile, are burning. This guy's loving every minute of it. He's like, yes, finally, right? I'm so glad it's happening. Don't get me wrong. A lot of us, like, we don't, we don't desire to see death or chaos or things being destroyed or, or things like that typically, right, in our everyday lives. We don't desire those things. But when it gets to a bursting point where nobody is coming to the rescue, nobody's doing anything, Mother Nature takes control and we accept what happens at that point because judgment comes basically that's how it's seen in ancient religions uh and then you've got this girl's like spitting out the white creamy stuff that's kind of weird uh it's a little too weird actually so i'm just going to skip that part it's kind of weird and yucky anyways uh, sorry and then they show you this girl they her she flicks she flicks out like this sort of uh um what do they call those things um jelly beans or whatever, like a jelly bean tongue. It's a forked tongue and she flicks it out and she like catches this fly or, or the bee or whatever it was in the sky. Uh, now this harkens to there are people in our world. Now that tongue might represent a lizard, possibly. Okay. It could represent, like, I know everyone, there's certain, if you're a reptilian fan, right? Like I, I love the concept. I do. But that like, there's some diehard, like, alien believers out there who are like, there are reptilians and they're freaking lizard people. You know what I mean? Okay. That's totally fine. It also could be symbolic of some other things too, which are alien in nature. So this, the tongue represents plasma, specifically the red hydrogenated ionized hydrogen that comes down out of the sky, right? That comes out of the mouth of this God up there in the sky, this, uh, this cosmic God or, or goddess, right? So some, that's why they have Medusa and her, she's like, ah, and Kali, ah, and all these other gods, ah, that's why all of these, uh, singers and all these other people they're that's why they're sticking their tongue out. Ah, like it's a sign things are about to change and, and, and your system is about to get messed up. So the God sticks out its tongue at us and basically saying, eh. so we do that too. We emulate what we see up there in the sky. All right. So anyway, she flicks out her tongue, catches that fly and everything's getting sucked up into the sky and they, and they show us this and it blows my mind because there have been times in my life when I'm like, Hmm, what does that mean? Uh, what does that represent? Hmm. Maybe it's like, internally, like the chakras and it's all moving up. You know what I mean? We could get deep and internalize all of this or, and we can also say the sky is sucking stuff up into it. Like exactly how they're showing us. This blows my mind. Anyways, red sky, everything is getting sucked up um, from the white house, which is our world. Everything's getting sucked up. All the people are like, ah, they're all freaking out, which many people will do. And see, the more that we, the more that people like myself study this and understand and and have a better understanding of what to expect when it happens the more we start to, to like expect it and the more that people don't expect it the more we kind of it, it i find humor in it actually so there's always a sylvan lining all right everything gets sucked up in the sky you can see that the guy that was out there mowing his lawn or whatever he gets totally sucked up the redhead girl's freaking out people are just getting sucked right up there into the sky the band's rocking out. The whole world's going insane. The tempest is flying around. People are going straight up into the sky. Now, I just did a video about how this is actually physically possible. It's a very good short video. Um, and it's called uh, something like When Pigs Fly. So if you want to know how this actually works, I made like a little four and a half minute video showing how you know, the rapture happens or people get sucked up and by eaten by Kronos and stuff. All these people, look at them. This is showing us possibly, instead of the internalizing this, however people internalize it, it's showing you saying, hey, one day, everybody and everything, right? Most things, many things I'll say, is all this debris is going to get sucked up. 
even if it's not like weightlessness or whatever, there will be such strong winds that the wind itself, the very winds that create that are created in a world storm, have the potential to just lift you right up off the ground and blow you away. And where you went, no man knoweth as they say. All right, so here's the black hole sun again. They're showing you all the debris going up there into the sky. Things are floating on up as scheduled, getting sucked right up into the space, the heavens, to Nibiru, to the place of the crossing, to the eye in the sky, to the opening of the plasma conduits, to the entrance to the circuits of time, to all the different wonderful ways that people look at this, and to the, the rabbit's tunnel, all the stuff, right? They all get sucked up and out of our world. This lady's walking her kid trying to distract him with a toy. He's staring right at the camera. Uh, and then he's... Oh, the lyrics. Let me get back to the lyrics. Did I miss anything? Jeez. The lyrics are also as important as the song is. I just want to make sure. They repeat Black Hole Sun like over and over and over right there. So then he says... He's looking up at the sky and he says, Hang my head. He's disappointed, right? He hangs his head. He's sad. He's disappointed. Maybe depressed, maybe anxiety, maybe like, you know, distraught. Drown my fear. So get rid of, get rid of my head. I mean, get rid of my fear, right? I'm, I'm hanging my head. I'm disappointed. And I drown my fear out until you all just disappear. He's saying, I can't, this, this world has me done, man. And unfortunately, it actually coincides with how the lead singer passed away. The story goes that um, he ended up dying. I think he's, you know, just turned, you know, he's in his early 50s or something. Uh, just did a concert. Everything seemed to be okay. But then afterwards, uh, allegedly had locked himself into his hotel room and killed himself um, because of depression, allegedly, right? Possibly. It could be. Some of these people who are very in tune with things like this, even if they don't understand, but especially if they don't understand, where these images are coming from, where this truth resonates from. And then they have the truth, but they don't quite get it. They haven't connected um, enough dots, but they've connected enough to know that they see everything differently. They just don't know how they're seeing it. And they feel worse than they did in the first place because they've always felt out of place. They've always felt like the black sheep. They've always felt like the world was off. But now they're being given like, you know, prophecies and truths and visions and stuff. And sometimes it can be too much for people to handle. I'm not saying that's what happened to Chris, but I am saying, I, would I guess that he's a good candidate for that? Totally. Absolutely. So he's hanging his head until you all just disappear. That's what I'm doing. When, when there's trolls in the chat, when there's trolls in real life, whenever there's bad people doing bad things just for the sake of their own happiness because to bad people being bad actually makes them happy and ruining and making ruining other people's day or their lives or throwing off their vibe or throwing off their groove makes these kind of people happy unfortunately right but what we do we wait we we just wait because one day they'll get sucked right up into the sky and you don't have to deal with it anymore right? It's, it can be overwhelming because we see so much bad and so much evil in this world. We almost want to take it upon ourselves to handle that. But save your razor blades, as they say in 21 Pilots. Save your razor blades now, not yet, right? Anyway, back to Chris Cornell. He's sad, man. I could see, look at look at this expression. Like that's a knowing expression, right? That's how I look at the sky. I've gone outside and spoken to the sky. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I've gone out there. I've had talks. Sometimes it was with God. Sometimes it's with the angels out above. Sometimes with the sky. Sometimes it's aliens. I'm like, I, I know that there's life out there. And I will go outside and I'll say, what the, are you having a good time? Is this funny? You know, sometimes I just vent my frustrations out at the sky. But this guy knows and he understands, you know. So we go back to the um, baby and the mom that's totally hit one of those nitrous oxide clouds. And he's talking about he wants these people to disappear, Right. This is your tip. This is a stellar parent in today's world, right? Just being totally judgmental about it, right? Uh, the lady is walking her kid, totally trying to just distract the kid. The kid is out in nature and should be looking at the wonders of the world and, you know, smelling the fresh air and looking at the trees and experiencing humanity. But instead, we just offer up all kinds of distractions so that they don't cry, so that they don't think so that they don't talk, so that they remain silent, right? 
um, or the, or so that they're just mindlessly amused, right? Hey, let's mindlessly amuse you. You know what I mean? I get that. It's fun to play with kids and stuff, and they like this, but they're, I, I think that they're also hinting at something a little deeper. And then they start asking the black hole sun to come back as he does his best squatter man or Atlas or Hercules, etc. Samson. Um, they all do the same pose. And then the sky turns red. There's all this debris everywhere. There will be debris all over the place. Okay. Um, it may not be easy to see. The wind is something I, I definitely think you should um, think about protecting yourself from. Um, the strong winds to keep you, you want to be protected and you don't want to get blown away and sucked up into the sky. But also there's all the debris in the sky, right? There's going to be sand and dirt and animals and all kinds of junk in the sky. Now, here's one of the best pictures that they show of the sky itself sort of opening up and creating this black hole. And I like it because they, they make it the true color, red, um, and because of this depressurization, we don't have any pressure. There's no rain, so it washes away the rain like we talked about. He does his best squatter man, and all the people who were transfixed by the sky earlier, or the chandelier, are now staring at that same chandelier, screaming in terror right? Some people may scream in terror because they're so shocked, right? Other people will be transfixed and think it's the most beautiful thing they've ever seen. They'll walk right out into the deadlights and either get sucked up, get zapped by the electricity, all kinds of things. They're freaking out though in this house. That guy's still watching TV, right? That's how, that's how programmed some people are. They'll just watch, as long as the TV's still on during the apocalypse, they're good. You know what I mean? Not me, not I. I will be, I will be hiding and trying to survive, uh, or sleeping. Some people will sleep right through it. Believe it or not, some people will sleep. They won't make it. Some people will sleep and they'll just wake up in a totally different world. They're like, whoa, what happened? Where am I? Thinking they traveled through time or something, you know, or died and went to heaven or or hell or who knows what. All right, so they're basically asking the apocalypse to come. Here's another one of those red rooms, right? Uh, the red rooms, they have a menorah out front because that's one of the shapes that the blue beam takes when it shoots up. Um, it's also representative of just plasma in general. This one happens to be red. But plasma is represented by the menorah or the split chandelier, the split candles, the, the trees, burning bushes, etc. That's what the plasma symbolizes. The red room itself is showing you that our world on the inside changes from black to red because the sky is... Um, is revealed. The plasma on the other side of the sky is seen now that the electromagnetics have reversed and the light is now going up and wrapping around the world, illuminating what is just beyond our skyline. All right, let's check out this room and see what's going on inside this room. We see a lady who is in a bathtub giving a huge dog a bath, a black and white dog. This guy is standing in the, in the, in the mirror this is what's going to happen. People are so concerned these days about their own looks. How do I look? Let me make sure, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for grooming yourself and stuff. But this describes our society so concerned with looks. Even those who think that they're being rebellious against caring about their looks and they just, they, they look so terrible or so disheveled or, or whatever that it's the opposite extreme. They still are caring about their looks. They're just rebelling against the good looks. You know what I mean? Um, anyways, that's what I'm kind of getting from this. So people are just staring into a mirror dimly. They don't know what they're looking at. They don't comprehend life and what, what it's like to really live. And just behind his hand, you can see they put one of those red carnations or red roses right behind him as well. Then they show you the dog. The dog's black and white, just like the lamb earlier was black and white, right? So this is the black and white symbolism of the various worlds outside of our realm. Dog backward is also God, of course. Now she's in there and she's she's being a little too intimate for my sake with the dog. I'm just gonna say that there's some weird stuff that happens toward before the apocalypse comes. Okay, the world goes into flux. The energy of the world goes into flux, and what that means for society is society goes into flux. People start doing some real weird stuff, and they start going super left, super right. They're all in flux. Uh, nobody knows what's what these days, and that's kind of, to me, what they're showing us here, too. The dog's like, what? I don't mind. Anyway, uh, so he's like, wash away the rain. This guy's staring off. Uh, they've got some Catholic stuff going on in there. The butterflies symbolism. Butterflies always indicate change, right? A change of lifestyle, basically. Something that's drastic, a drastic change. 
Um, so why do they use that in like monarch, um, the monarch butterfly and stuff for hypnotism and stuff? It's because of the drastic change whenever code words are given to people and they just flip and they turn on this compartmentalized persona in their heads. All right. So anyways, she's getting a plasma lick from this giant black and white dog. Now they hear the pop. The world depressurizes. The black hole sun has made its appearance. Uh, all the air is getting sucked up into the sky. She's covering her ears because it's so loud, possibly, right? And they're starting to freak out. And they're like, oh my God, what's going on? And this guy's face contorts after they realize, hey, pop, the world depressurized and maybe hit a nitrous oxide cloud. Maybe the electricity is creating a loose bond in his very flesh and his flesh is stretching and he can't control it because he doesn't know how because he's had no practice. This, Meanwhile, the lady that was walking her kid outside, the entire sky turns black and dark, right? As you can see, it was daytime last time I showed this lady. Now it's nighttime. Um, it's not later on that night. She's in the exact same neighborhood. Um, it's just that all the lights, the stars have disappeared. The sun is gone. The moon is gone. This is what happens. Now let's see what happens after that. There's a strong electrical surge right where this lady's metal baby carriage is. Everything's getting sucked up in the sky. There's the two circles and there's all, you know, the, the, the tongue of God, the tongue of Kali, the tongue of Medusa or whatever, right? Sticking its tongue out at us. And then all of a sudden there's this magenta flash, boom, right there. there this lady happened to be touching metal, which was the baby crib or whatever, happened to be in a place where the current was going to ground itself. The current comes in and jellifies this kid. Okay, turns it into jelly or plasma, essentially. It's, it's jellified. I don't know how else to say that, but it turns into some sort of jelly. This happens so fast. Um, I, had to, I had to like replay this particular clip because all of these pictures happen in about one second. So all of this, this baby turning into jelly is really interesting and really weird. But that's very possible. Whatever this, um, the plasma above, Okay, let me let me back up just a second. The plasma above has the ability to do many things, activating or deactivating parts of our DNA and our genetic structure. One of the things it has the ability to do is to create such loose bonds in your actual composition of your body that your body melts, right? If it's if the bonds are too loose, the body will become placid or plastic-like and it will basically start becoming very stretchy and oozing and stuff like that. Also, this can happen to rocks. This can happen to earth. This can happen, which, which by the way, is a strong possibility for a possible explanation as to how did they shape these ancient megalithic structures and how did they get them to fit perfectly and stuff because they weren't always solid rock, right? If they were hit by certain electrical charges that, um, that, that screwed with their, the, the ions inside of them, they could become loose. They could become malleable and plastic-like. All right, so the baby turns into jelly, gets sucked up into the sky. Boom, there's some more electrical activity. Cascadian Prince. Hey, just gave me $20 and says, uh, may the gods bless you and your kin. Cheers from the Cascades. Thank you, Cascadian Prince. I appreciate you. All right, so we go back to the group. They're loving it. They're giving the sky a big hug. Thank you. Good to see you. It's about time. And you know what? I can resonate with that. I don't even care if I get sucked up. I don't even care what, what happens to me. I just, for the sake of us all, I sing this song all the time. I'm like, I'm, I'm basically singing the song every day, even, even if I don't sing, sing this exact same song. Now they show this He-Man looking dude who's working out. Um, this is symbolic for, for one main reason, I believe. Those of us who have been living and growing up under such strenuous conditions as high pressure in our atmosphere, pushing in on every side, and a high, what people would refer to in academics as a high gravitational pull, and a higher density level, because when, when our world is depressurized, things become less dense, right, as well. Um, but because of those factors, that makes us extremely strong in the world to come when the conditions in this world change, when we don't have all that pressure pushing down on everything um, and all that density and stuff. And you can now pick up a 25 pound weight with ease and just toss it like it were a pebble, right? So basically this is where the superpowers come into play. So they show you this dude getting all ripped up. 
Hey, welcome to my channel, Capri. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right, so then they go back to everybody getting sucked up into the sky. Boom, there they are. This is a bird's eye view, right? From This is the guy who was combing his hair, by the way. So everyone who's so concerned about your looks and everything, when the world goes into complete chaos, you're not going to care about your looks any longer. For a very long time, I promise, you're not going to care. You're, we're not going to be so superficial any longer. You're not going to be able to. It's not like there's going to be a bunch of mirrors lying around. Um, it's not like you're going to be you're going to be trying to impress everybody when you go out for your local stroll, escaping and evading marauders, cannibals, phantasoids. You know what I mean? You're not going to care too much about your appearance. We have that luxury these days, unfortunately. So these people get sucked up into the sky. The sky's ripped open. There's a hole in the sky. Everyone's getting sucked up. The lady has made all the lipstick totally way too big on her face, symbolizing the hole in the sky as well. And the high winds are blowing. She's transfixed though. Do you notice these people aren't running and hiding, right? It's like they're hypnotized by it, the it up there in the sky, the nameless one, the thing that they just refer to as it because they, um, they forgot its name basically. They forgot what it is. They forgot all about it. And of course, there's the red flower in the background as well. Her face starts to stretch out, gets highly contorted. Everything's getting sucked up into the sky. I love saying the sucked up into the sky. Like, I will say that as often as possible because it's such an impactful sentence. It's an impacting sentence. And it's something that just sounds so ridiculous. It almost requires thought for somebody to hear it. Either that or just will completely blow their mind to the point where they just dismiss it completely, right? So yeah, everything's getting sucked up into the sky. <laughs> uh, these people are flying away. They're, these She's probably a Christian and she's getting raptured. I'm sure she looks happy. She looks like she's forever going to be with the Lord in the air. So yeah, she's extremely happy about that. She probably did a running nose dive or a swan dive up into the sky. That's pretty much it. And then they show you the black hole sun finishes up, the eye in the, si in the, in the sky. It's also the eye of Sauron, right? This is the all-seeing eye symbolism. I can't stress that enough. So when you see this, it's not like, you know, just one eye because one is the sun and one is the moon and people were prim primitive or whatever. No, there's a third eye that opens. <laughs> and when that third eye opens, the world changes drastically. And that's symbolic and literal and, and actual. All right, cool. Now I'd like to jump into the chat now that I'm done presenting Black Hole Sun. Hopefully I covered everything. Boom. All right, sweet. Now I'm back into the chat. So what we're going to do is take a quick break and I'm going to return and I'm going to talk to everyone in the chat. So if you have any questions, if I missed you while I was giving the presentation, I'll be here and uh, all you have to do is type in J-A-Y. It highlights it on my side. Or you can type in at jdreamers and it'll get my attention as well. Just like anonymity just did. It says at j. Boom. Perfect. Perfect example. Let's take a quick break. Uh, what you're about to listen to is a prophecy by Mother Shipton. A witch, or at least an accused witch, um, from a couple of hundred years ago. This is nothing modern. This is nothing new. This was a woman who allegedly was alive during a time when there was little to no knowledge of electricity and lights and our modern world that we live in today, she accurately describes it. I just sang it. I sang her prophecy, um, but it is nothing that I wrote. It is something that she wrote about that she understood because she understood the past and knew that the past would return. So let's check this out and then I'll be right back to hang out with everybody in, in the chat for a bit. Around the world men's thoughts will fly Quick as the twinkling of an eye And waters shall great wonders do How strange, and yet it shall come true Beneath the water men shall walk Shall ride, shall sleep, shall even talk And in the air men shall be seen In white and black and even green For in those wondrous far-off days The women shall adopt a craze To dress like men in trousers wear And to cut off their locks of hair They'll ride astride 
side with brazen brow as witches do. On broomsticks now there'll be a sign for all to see. Be sure that it will certain be. Then love shall die and marriage cease and nations wane and babes decrease as wives shall fondle cats and dogs and men live much the same as hogs. Pictures alive with movements free. Boats like fishes beneath the sea. When men like birds shall scour the sky then half the world deep drenched in blood shall die. Then half the world deep drenched in blood shall die. For those who live this century through, in fear and trembling this shall do. Flee to the mountains and the dens, to bog and forest and wild fens. For storm will rage and oceans roar, when Gabriel stands on sea and shore. And as he blows his wondrous horn, old worlds die and new be born. Fiery dragon will cross the sky six times before this earth shall die. Mankind will tremble and frightened be for the six heralds in this prophecy. For seven days and seven Seven nights, man will watch this awesome sight. The tides will rise beyond their ken to bite away the shores, and then the mountains will begin to roar. And earthquakes split the plain to shore, and flooding waters rushing in will flood the lands with such a din that mankind cowers in muddy fen and snarls about his fellow men. And when the dragon's tail is gone, man forgets and smiles and carries on to apply himself. Too late, too late, for mankind has earned deserved fate. His mask smile, his false grandeur will serve the gods, their anger stir, and they will send the dragon back to light the sky. His tail will crack upon the earth and rend the earth, and man shall flee, king, lord, and serf. And men will die of thirst before the oceans rise to mount the shore, and lands will crack and rend anew. You think it's strange, it will come true. And in some far off distant land, and some men, oh such a tiny band, will have to leave their solid mount and span the earth, those few to count, and those surviving this will then begin the human race again. But not on land already there, but on ocean beds, stark dry and bare, not every soul on earth will die as the dragon's tail goes sweeping by, not every land on earth will sink, but these will wallow in stench and stink of rotting bodies of beast and man, of vegetation crisped on land and those that live will ever fear the dragon's tail for many years but time erases memory you think it's strange but it will be and before the race is built anew a silver serpent comes to view and spew out men of like unknown to mingle with the earth now grown cold from its heat and these men can enlighten the minds of future men to intermingle and show them how to live and love and thus endow the children with the second sight a natural thing so that they might grow graceful humble and when they do the golden age will start anew okay right on thank you mother shipton appreciate it hey let's jump into the chat now this is sort of this is going to be something that i'm doing from now on I, t I like I like talking a lot. I like I like doing longer videos, and I also like hanging out in the chat. So I've, if you've watched my channel long enough, you you have seen that I I really try to listen to input from the viewers. Right? Some viewers love live streams. Some viewers like short edited videos that get right to the point. Um, you know, if if uh, if you like the longer videos, great. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to really be in the chat on during the presentation portion. Uh, we'll take a break after the presentation portion anytime in the future, and then I'll come back and then I'll be able to engage, hang out in the chat, take phone calls, stuff like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. That way, the people who are watching for the content, they can get their content, um, you know, and everyone else can hang out during the live stream and, and just chill afterwards and, and talk. All right. So let's jump into the chat. Everyone's saying aloha. What's up to everybody? Good to see you. I got plant brained who says, I'm new to your channel and you're awesome, Jay. I just watched East is Up and now I'm watching this video from the beginning. Sweet. Um, God, I had so much fun doing the East is Up and I, I, I really hope that there, were, that there were portions at least that really made a lot of sense to people because it makes so much sense to me. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Welcome to my channel. Shannon W says, Jay, I see it everywhere now, not just movies. So I asked earlier during the break how many people have started to notice 
all of the little plasma apocalypse references and other things in the movies, all the different breadcrumbs, right? And because I'm getting a lot of comments where people are like, bro, I'm seeing this stuff everywhere now. I can't even watch a movie without seeing the symbolism in it. Uh, Chuck and Chambers, hey, good to see you again. Says, watch The Dark Tower. Jedi says, interested in defensive measures. Okay, defensive measures against what? Uh, Patricia Tewitu says, Tuatu. Oh, that's cool. I used to have like a total best friend whose last name was Tuatu. Uh, says, time is, uh, time is a constraint mankind have put on ourselves. The quantum crystal in the computer is for real. I believe in the quantum crystal as well, actually. Um, and the quantum world. Inetta or Lynetta says, Jay, where does this reset fit in the seven year tribulation? Good question. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to revisit the book of Revelation, but I'm just going to spitball off the top of my head since you asked. Uh, I would say right around the time whenever the locusts are being released from the bottomless pit, right? That's one of the things. That's one of the signs that the that the uh, electromagnetic barrier above us and below us is gone, right? Once the electromagnetic barrier is gone, those locusts, as they call them, or demons or bugs or... Uh, creatures or monsters or whatever, they can now come out and others can now enter in from above as well, which is right around the time that Jesus and his gang of followers arrive to <laughs> clean up the rest of the house. Ah, I totally just, I totally just missed that. All right, let me jump back into the chat. Shannon W says, Jay, I've been studying plasma apocalypse since 2008. I've been waiting for a good person like you to help inform us. Well, that's awesome. I'm super honored to be here. And, and I, I like sharing my research and my thoughts. It's not all research either. Sometimes it's just a feeling. I'll be honest. And, th and that really pisses some people off if they're very academically minded and they're like, where's your source? Where's your proof? Uh, where do you get your references? You know what I mean? Who says I need any? You know? Who, like, is that what they said to John the Baptist and, the, and various prophets of old? Right? Uh, Call in Nostradamus. Call him in so we can uh, ask him to advise us. Nostradamus, what do you say? I say in the year of 1528, many people won't eat what's on their plate or whatever, right? He just makes it up. Whatever, whatever he says. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, how do you know Nostradamus? <laughs> I'm just rambling now, but you know what I mean? That's, that's kind of what it is. It's like, wh what's your reference, Nostradamus? Right? Cite some sources. No, sometimes it comes from your spirit. Oh, uh, YMMOT says, Jay, speak on pigs and humans, please. All right. Well, if, if you have a request, uh, I'm more than happy to speak on it. What would you like to know though, right? I need a little more from you guys if you have a request. I, I, usually if somebody's like, hey, talk about giants, I got nothing. I just, I really got nothing. There's so many places I could go. I don't know where to begin. I don't know what kind of information people want. So pigs and humans, um, I would say that it's, there's a strong indication that they're related to one another and that pigs might have at one time been humans, um, which by the way is actually, let me just give a shout out to Mind Unveiled. Okay. Um, Mind Unveiled is another YouTube channel that I love and I've been watching for quite some time. Um, I'm, I'm working with them right now to collaborate and do uh, a little presentation on cyclical resets and stuff. And they just put out a whole video about how pigs and humans may be related or that how pigs may have once been humans that were changed into pigs. So I'm going to give them a shout out and let you go check out that video. I have lots of input on it too. Um, and basically I think it's, it's very, it, it's, it's what I call, um, Damn, I, I totally just, the word escapes me now, but basically it's when humans change into animals. I believe that this type of a thing is possible with the plasma apocalypse. When that energy comes down and it's able to reshape or perfect DNA in your DNA strands and, uh, you know, change things around. Let's say that, I don't know, you've been eating pork and bacon your whole life or whatever, and you got a lot of pig DNA in there. And just like in the movie, The Fly, when Jeff Goldblum goes into that pod, the electricity is thrown around in there the pods were designed to perfect whatever was inside of it. And Jeff Goldblum had a fly in there with him. So it incorporated the fly DNA into his DNA, changing him into a giant fly. I, I would say it's no far stretch of my imagination to apply the same concept to pigs or other animals. Good, good one. Chuck and Chambers says, Jay, there's a Highlander 
the animated series that talks about it in uh, directly and the apocalypse uh, forgotten history. I mean, yes, Highlander is a good one too. There can be only one. There can be only one. I love that. That's like my motto because if there's only one, then that's, you know, that's all there is, is one. <clears throat> Amanda S. says, I'm so glad that Jay is doing a live stream tonight. Hey, it's good to see you too, Amanda. Uh, Aaliyah wants to know if anyone remembers Animorphs. Uh, it sounds familiar. Shannon says, we are what we eat. Yes, that's pretty much the simplicity of it, right? So it's possible if you have too much of some foreign, strange, weird DNA that's, that's not really human in there, you could get changed. And I did a whole video on it. Uh, I forgot what it was called, though. Let me see. I'm Googling it. Oh, therianthropy. That's what it's called. And I believe that's what my video about it is called as well. Therianthropy. So therian, T-H-E-R-I-A-N, and then thropy, therianthropy. So check out that video. I talk about uh, people turning into animals a lot. I might come back and revisit that subject too because it's a fun one. And that also gets us into um, the, the subject of how like the ancient gods or the ancient aliens or the ancient beings or whatever that came down from the sky, they are said to have been geneticists and that they worked on like human attempt number one, failure, human attempt number two, failure. And, but, but they didn't kill them or anything, right? They just released them into the wild. They had all these weird um, genetic failures, basically. It's a really interesting read. Jamie says, uh, J Dreamers, what part do you think Jesus plays in all of this? And is there anything that might correspond with Jesus's return in the sky or on the clouds? Thanks. Yeah, yeah, of course, Jamie. I believe that the story of Jesus and the truths in those stories about Jesus um, are all about the plasma apocalypse. I see that they're co-related. Actually, I relate the plasma apocalypse and the events that happen during the plasma apocalypse to all of the religions. I believe this is where all of the religions came from. And just like in the Black Hole Sun video, where they will all return one day. Um, so yes, um, basically to me, uh, Jesus is a, a personified symbol of the blue beam, of that spirit energy that is seen as good and wholesome and life-giving that fills our world. And when that light is seen shooting up from within the earth, it is seen as the earth giving birth or the virgin giving giving birth to the light of the world, etc. <clears throat> and um, the reason that uh, Jesus is seen returning on the clouds, first of all, there's also the angels that come back with Jesus, right? It says there's legions of angels. Well, that's just a religious word for aliens, basically, if you ask me. Um, there's these otherworldly beings that are from the heavens or space or whatever. They also come down from the sky at that, at that time with Jesus. And, uh, so you've got the blue beam that's shooting up in the sky. You've got these otherworldly, what I call phantasoids, right? There's bipedal phantasoids. There's monstrous looking phantasoids. There's human looking phantasoids. They're just fractal travelers. They're out there traveling the, the fractal verse and they have left their mesocosm and entered into a new mesocosm, which is our microcosm. They've come down into our tiny world. Everybody here is tiny right now. All of the plants, all the animals, all the people, we are the who's in Whoville <clears throat> because of the pressure that has shrank us down in size. Just like, have you ever seen the sword in the stone, right? The, or the blue beam in the Mount Maru, the sword in the stone, the cartoon version. Well, Merlin jumps up and he's singing the song and he's talking about how he packs everything into his magical bag and he says, shrink in size, very small. There's got to be enough room for all and all the little like furniture and everything. It all starts shrinking down into this box or into this container, this bag, which represents our whole world, right? Everything shrinks in this world over time. And then boom, it depressurizes and everything grows bigger for an age. And then that pressure starts to build up and build up and build up. And then everything gets smaller once it hits a critical point. Patricia Tewatu says, uh, Jay, if we are what we eat, what does that mean if we fast? Does that make us more energy or water? I'd say it makes you the flash. <laughs> if you're fasting, get it? All right. Anyways, sorry. Dad joke, dad joke. Um, what does that make you if you're fasting? Uh, I don't know. Actually, I do. I have, I have an inkling. So let me answer this question right here real quick, and then I'm going to jump back in the chat. 
I believe that we go through ages, eons, right? From apocalypse to apocalypse and between those apocalyptic events. We go through phases in, in what we need for nourishment. I believe that at the dawn of civilization or at um, the golden age, just immediately after the apocalypse itself, that the world is filled with so much energy that there is no need to, there is no requirement for any extra nourishment at all because the air itself is nourishing. The atmosphere itself is so highly charged that it corresponds to your body and your body becomes highly charged. You don't require sleep after the apocalypse. You're not tired. You don't need to take a nap. You don't need to go to bed for one third of the entire day. That's all gone. You don't, you, you probably don't need to eat food. There's probably no need to put things in your mouth and to chew them and grind them up and stuff and then swallow it. Um, the air itself is, is energized electrically with soul or spirit energy that is energizing your body physically and energizing and increasing your spirit itself. This would be akin to what people call living off of the ether, right? I don't know if they're called breatharians or etherarians or furians or I don't know. I can't keep up with all the labels these days. But that's what I believe that is. Now, as the pressure starts to increase again, as the uh, spirit energy starts to find little pockets instead of just being full, right? Um, and as that energy like um, dissipates or whenever it's released during the next cycle or, or there's other conditions. But basically, people start hungering again, right? And they start needing a little bit more nourishment. They might need to eat a little tiny bit more. Certainly not a huge meal, right? But just like maybe a snack, maybe a snack more often than they used to. And then that grows over time. And then they'll need more fruit, more food and more nourishment. And they're eating the vegetables and, and uh, they're eating the plants and the fruits and stuff, right? But consider this, giants will grow into this world, okay? Um, we're tiny, like I said, our offspring who are born into the post-apocalyptic world will be born into an atmosphere of, of, of little pressure, right? There's like no pressure for the future generations quite actually. <clears throat> and because of that, they grow in size. They grow very large. There's other factors that play into gigantic growth for humans as well. But our children grow into giants. They grow into titanic beings. And whenever the hunger returns, it will return to them too. People will eat up all of the fruits and veggies, but those fruits and veggies will grow smaller and smaller in size. And remember, people's lifespans will be extended as well. So the giants will start eating up all of the large quantities of food, right? People will have to actually start planting food and having stuff like that. But when it all runs out and the veggies and the fruits run out, there's people, there's flesh, there's animals. And that's whenever the world starts to go through another change where life turns on life to, to survive. So those are the different epics of nourishment, I guess you could call it, <clears throat> the different ages of nourishment. All right, let me jump back in the chat. Like the sun eaters. Yes, exactly like the sun eaters, except, well, it's, it's similar to the sun eaters, right? People who say that they're eating the sunlight or whatever. Like, I mean, I say that, you know, kind of jokingly just because I, I believe there's some truth to it, but I don't believe that the conditions exist in our world today as is for a person to just live a thousand years by getting a tan and staring at the sun. That's just me. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's more likely and more probable to happen when the conditions in our world change so that the air and the ether or the light from the sky or whatever changes, enabling us to have to be more nourished and satisfied. <clears throat> yes, Pearson the Veil says it's called manna. Excuse me. All right, let's see here. What else we got? I'm just in the chat seeing if anybody highlighted my name. Why MMOT says, Jay, do you really think rovers are on Mars or somewhere in New Mexico? I do not believe in Mars. I'm just going to say that. Like, I believe in other realms. I believe that there are other realms out there. And I believe that there may be one or two or, or many more realms that are called Mars, affectionately, right? But the concept and the storyline that's been fed to me, which is that when I look up at the ceiling of our world, that one of those lights out there is, is an actual realm in and of itself. No, 
Is it symbolic that there are realms beyond our dome of the of the sky? Yes, I totally think so. Do I think anyone? Do I think it's likely that people are leaving our world and getting past the quote unquote Van Allen belts and getting past the firmament and getting past the plasmosphere and the ionosphere and all the dangers, and that they're spritzing their way with little air jets, pss, you know, on their way to Mars, where flying at you know, ungodly speeds, they're all of a sudden going to spritz to a, to a, uh, brakes. They're going to have air brakes or whatever. I don't know. Reverse thrusters or whatever they say they use. The story does not make sense to me. So when I see those pictures of the Mars and moon and other places, whatever, I believe that they're just local. And I'm, I've seen many examples where you can clearly see like, like trash or debris that is, shouldn't be on Mars in the pictures. Hopefully that helps to clear up that question. Let's see what else we got. Yes, jet dad jokes. I love dad jokes. That's why I like that. I liked breaking down that movie, um, The Jungle Cruise, with The Rock. Right? He's like, he's like, uh, I was dating this cross-eyed girl, but it didn't work out. We just couldn't see eye to eye. And then they're like, oh, that's terrible. And then he's like, well, I. I thought she was seeing someone on the side anyway. <laughs> that was one of the jokes from the movie. It's cracking me up. I love those kind of jokes. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh, Taylor. Taylor Michael Thompson It says, hey, welcome back, by the way. Says, Jay, I believe the sun is in our atmosphere. I, I totally do too. Like, I think the sun is in within our sky. It's got to be. I mean, like, it just makes the most sense to me. So I'm with you. Amanda S. says, Jay Drummers, how many dimensions do you think there are? One. That's my answer. One dimension. I mean, if everything is one, the dimensions are also one. So ultimately, I think there's one dimension. However, has that is it possible to divvy up that one dimension and make it look like it's got ripples and that those are sub-dimensions and stuff? Yes, absolutely. So I also believe in that. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Lynetta says... Uh, Jay, I think that the reset plasma apocalypse is the least of our worries. What we worry about is not falling for the mark of the beast. Ooh, all right. <laughs> well, I'm not worried about the plasma apocalypse at all because c'est la vie. That's nature. I love nature. I want it to clean house. I want it to do whatever it needs to do. And I am cheering nature on. Uh, so I'm not super worried about the plasma apocalypse at all. Like, pfft. Just like I'm not worried about getting hit by a car whenever I drive my car or whatever. Now, the mark of the beast is also something I'm not worried about, but I do believe that that's a struggle that we're all kind of going through right now. Me personally, I've, I've uh, been, you know, I've had my days as a biblical st scholar and whatnot. Uh, it's where I started my truth seeking journey, I guess you could say, as, as an adult. And I believe that the mark of the beast is no physical mark whatsoever. I don't think it's a chip. I don't think it's a tattoo. I don't think it's anything physical that they put onto you or whatever. I believe that the mark on the hand represents evil works, doing evil, like evil actions, selfish, bad, negative, whatever, evil actions. And then the mark on the head is the mark of dirty thoughts, a bad mind, a poor mind, right? Um, evil thoughts, basically. They're thinking evil continuously and acting upon it continuously. And that is, to me, the mark of the beast, the mark of the red plasma, the mark of the bad guys or whatever in the story. Uh, Piercing the Veil says, I have my people, my private pilot license. All pilots know that the earth is flat. There is no correction for curvature. Well, my first question would be, have you met all of the pilots? There's a lot there's more than 21. There's probably a whole bunch of pilots in the world. So I hear what you're saying. I'm just saying, hmm, I know that there's many people out there that do believe that. And I totally support that perspective. All right, where else were we? Yen. No, Aliyah. Aliyah says, I think my, my understanding so far, uh, there are infinite dimensions like fractals. And within all of those dimensions, like Jay said, oneness. Yes. So that would be like, for example, you could pretend that your body is the cosmos in the multiverse, whatever, the, all of everything. You, let's pretend that your body is like God. 
your body encapsulates countless worlds upon worlds, within worlds, within worlds. And your body is one. And so are all of those worlds inside of you, all of those little realms and little creatures and all of the life that is going about its business unbeknownst to you at this moment in time. Just like what we are doing is unbeknownst to them on their tiny little microscopic scales. They're not looking up wondering how their seemingly insignificant actions are having an effect on the entire in our reality. Something to think about. Uh, let's see who else we got. What else we got? We got Zafra Kar- Carpelli. What's up, Zakra? Zara? Zara? Says, J Dreamers, during the last eclipse, there were clouds behind the moon. I'm just saying. Okay. I didn't see him. I didn't even see the eclipse. I don't really care. Honestly, if you've seen one eclipse, you've seen them all. To me, they're cool. And if I catch one, sweet, I'll totally check it out because I'm honestly hoping that something terrible happens. Every time there's an eclipse, I'm like, black hole sun, won't you come? Basically, in my mind, right? But then I get disappointed because nothing happens. I'm like... That's the same thing with a comet. You know what I mean? If I see a comet, I'm really only excited if it does something. Otherwise, it's just sitting there in the sky and it's super boring to me and I'm moving on to the next one. Kevin Kruger says, Jay, did you hear about the forest? They found 630 feet uh, sinkhole in China. Yeah, I believe that there's going to be more and more sinkholes popping up all over the place too as we get closer to the reset. Uh, Brian Colford says, Jay, have you ever polled a live chat to see how many were lucid dreamers growing up or currently? No, I have not. I was able to control my dreams growing up and I feel like it's made this info so easy to dive into. I can relate to that because I'm my, I have the exact same story. Um, when I was a kid and even to this day, like when I want to, honestly, sometimes I don't want to be lucid in my dreams. I sometimes just want to just in, be asleep and relaxed and allow the dream to take me for a ride or whatever. I'm going to be honest. But I also was able to um, dream lucidly. I actually practiced. I wanted to do it. So I started researching independently when I was a kid how to lucid dream. I didn't read books on it or anything. I just started figuring out stuff myself. about the, And I was listening to my dreams, especially the repetitious ones over and over and over. So yes, I can definitely relate to that. And uh, I believe that others will be able to as well. I think a lot of people are, are probably having more lucid dreams than they used to. Uh, what else do we got? What else? What else? Anything else in the chat? Underground ancient forest. Dude. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm, I, 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 I feel that inside of the earth that the, it's abundant with trees. Like that there's probably lots of trees inside the hollow recesses of the earth. There's probably lots of different plant life, lots of huge trees and stuff. Um, and it's more, it's more the way our world will be af- immediately after the apocalypse. Or not, maybe not immediately, but soon after, comparatively speaking. Sorry if I'm missing you in the chat. I'm just trying to see what everyone's are highlighted. Candy Jones says, Jay, have you heard of Pink Moon Song by Nick Drake? No, I have not heard of that song. Not yet, at least. But I'm sure it's about the plasma apocalypse. <laughs> uh, Lori. Lori says, Hi, Jay and everyone. What exactly is plasma? Good question. So plasma... In layman's terms, I'm just going to simplify it, is um, gases that have been electrified, right? To the point where um, they're ionized. And what that means is they have a very, very, very loose, but at the same time, a, a good strong connection to one another, where they're basically act as a solid, but they're also acting as a gas and they're also acting as a liquid. So for me, I would say plasma is the first state of matter. Um, also, I would, I would say plasma is spirit. I mean, that's that's one of my own personal, you know, things that um, I feel pretty strongly about. But, you know, it's not 100%. But, yeah, it, I feel like sp- plasma is spirit, basically. Uh, what else we got? We got Jeannie Bottle. Jeannie Bottle says, J Dreamers, they built a table from an old tree for Queen's 70th. It is big. Yeah, I bet. They like to do stuff like that. Oh, it's the queen's birthday. What should we do? Let's cut down the tallest, biggest, oldest tree on earth and turn it into a dining table and give it to the queen. Like, that's so terrible. God, that's... uh. 
Jason Enriquez says, J Dreamers, have you looked into Bro Sanchez? He's been producing a lot of information lately. Yeah, uh, sometimes I'll pop into his chat, see what see what's going on. Uh, it's usually pretty busy, so I don't hang out a lot. Um, you know, uh, usually it's something that he shows on the screen that catches my eye, so I want to see like what his thoughts are on it. <clears throat> Last time he was showing a picture of the blue beam shooting up through the different chakras of the earth, and I was just, I I couldn't wait for him to talk about the blue beam, but. You know, he had some other stuff to talk about, which is cool. Um, and, and I like his style. You know, he's, he's definitely somebody that presents his own little flavor. And uh, he brings his own perspective and everything to the table. And I love it. So I, I totally support Bro Sanchez. Um, and a lot of other people, too. There's a lot of good, solid truthers out there that, you know, that I support them. Like, I, I mean, for, I, I just how you guys send me super chats, I'll totally drop a super chat and their little presentation or whatever. I support all of those tree seekers. As long as they're the type that, that are not interested in bickering and argument and debate and getting caught up in drama and stuff like that, I tend to stay away from any, anything that's like that. <clears throat> Jay, what's reset? Reset is when something starts over. Uh, let's see. We got Seeking Yeshua, who says, Since I've been listening to your channel, Jay, the notion that spirits are plasma makes sense to me. Right on, right on. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, I, they, I can see it everywhere. Not only that, but it, once you start looking at the paranormal world, right? I, don't, I haven't really gone into great detail into the paranormal, which is probably maybe right around the corner. Um, but the paranormal world, world is filled with electromagnetics and symbolism for electronics and and all of that. So yeah, it's totally related. Genie Bottle says that they dug up an old tree, 5,000-year-old oak that was buried. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, I, I believe that people start finding interesting artifacts from the old age um, right around this time too. Catchoff Dottry says, Jay, what if the sun that we see is a reflection on the dome of the inside of Mount Moreau. Talk about a leap of faith. Okay, hold on. Let me process. What if the sun that we see is a reflection on the outside, on the dome of the inside of Mount Moreau? Oh, okay. I see. So if there's like a dome on the inside of Mount Moreau, I could be. I'm all for it. I mean, I, I'm open to ideas. I love ideas. Um, I don't like being told this is the way that it is, especially whenever there's so many questions that can't be answered about it. Piercing the veil. Hey, th thank you. Did a total super chat and says, awesome show, brother. I've been watching you since the MCO days. You've come a long way and good on you. Thank you. I super appreciate it. Oh, Stephen H. Hey, new newcomer, Stephen. I hope you got the, I think you responded. You asked me a question in the, in the comments. And I did answer um, on your channel. I hope you got that. I haven't checked. Uh, Steven says, Jay Dreamers, can enlightenment attained be electrocuted by the very electromagnetic field that one is? Yes. Could a ball of plasma attack a Jesus character? And if no, could a test be devised? Yeah, absolutely. So we're just dealing with opposites in, in inner energy, right? So we could totally test that, right? I mean, we have. I mean, collectively, mankind has, has tested this all the time, and we say like attracts like, right? It's it's magnetism, electromagnetism. You can test it whenever you're in a room and somebody walks in and they have a bad vibe, and it throws off everyone else's vibration. They just everyone just kind of knows, like opposite energy is coming from that other person. You know what I mean? So yes, I do. I definitely think that it's testable. Kevin Kruger says, Jay, I have an amazing movie that you would love. It's called Princess. Mononoke. Not sure if you've seen or heard of it. it. Has plasma and ancient forest and animal gods. Crazy movie worth watching. Right on. Okay. I'll, if I see it, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. I think I'm starting to maybe lose my voice here. So maybe a couple more in the chat and then we'll run the credits. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cherokee Soul says, Jay Dreamers. Okay. I believe you just answered my question. It explains what I've seen. Okay. Sweet. Right on. Uh, anything else? Let's see. We're going to do a couple more. Kara, Kara says, Jay, do you agree with Jason slash Archaics on the 2040 date? No, I do not. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I, I, I'm not a big date setter person. Uh, it seems far off like things are happening much sooner. 
yes. So I don't really like to talk about like, when do you think it's going to happen? Um, I actually, that's not true. Let me back up a minute. Let me back up. I love talking about and speculating. When is this going to happen in my private life? I do that all the time, but I sort of semi kind of refuse. Occasionally you might hear some of my ideas, but for the most part, I don't like talking about, oh, guys, I've done the calculations and it's going to be boom on this date, on this time or whatever. One, because a billion people have been wrong in the past, right? Two, prophecy says that a billion more people are going to be wrong about it in the future. Um, and three, my research indicates that this is something that changes our actual times. This is why our calendars change. This is why uh, we need longer years every time and longer and more months need to be added and stuff because the earth grows and then it throws off all of the calculations and it needs to be recalculated. Can it be recalculated? Yes. Is it possible that it can be instigated and and agitated to the point of happening so that almost like people are trying to control it to start it or to kick it off? Yes, I believe so. Um, I believe looking at the signs is a billion times more important than trying to calculate a date for when this is going to happen, right? It does not matter to me. It matters not to, to myself when it's going to happen the truth of the matter and the more important thing lies in being prepared for it to happen at any time, right? Or at least specific times throughout the year that our ancestors have passed down to us in the form of holidays or holy days. Kara said, it feels like it's happening sooner. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree. Personally, I think, you know, I feel like it's going to happen in my lifetime. I have always felt this way. I have a sense of knowing, Right. I could be wrong though. Just because I say I know it does not mean that I actually have undeniable God knowledge. I'm just saying I have a very, very, very strong feeling that in my lifetime and maybe sooner than later, yes, it will probably happen. I hope that helps to answer that question. But I'm also leaving room and I'm saying, hey, I'm not telling you I know when it's going to happen. I'm only saying I know it's going to happen. But even when I say I know it's going to happen, anything is possible. The, whatever we call God could just decide to shut it all off. Boom. Prematurely. It could just be done, right? Like you're done playing the video game and hit the power button. All kinds of things could happen. I feel like the most important thing are the relationships that we build as we, as we do our research, the family and the friends and the acquaintances and, and you know, people that we, we get to know who are like-minded so that we can come together and that we can share good vibes and that we can happily look and face the apocalypse when it's clearly on the way because we are confident knowing that we have discussed it, knowing that we are at the very least mentally and hopefully spiritually prepared for such an occasion. Back in the chat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dang, I need more water. Dan Bear says, Jay, I just found your channel. It's been mind expanding. Semper Fi from one Marine to another. Right on. It's nice to meet you, Dan Bear. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, what else? What else? What else? S. Ra says, zero point field with quantum physics helps to prove that Reiki or energy healing and uh, influence is very possible. Also explaining psychic or telepathy. I totally agree with you. I was actually teaching uh, my son about Reiki the other day and, and how there's different methods of healing and stuff and where, he where healing actually comes from because healing doesn't come from the external going inward, right? I mean, it's pretty simple for those of us who already understand it, right? That healing comes from the soul. It comes from the spirit. It comes from the energies and the currents that those energies flow in in the body and how they get stuck and how they have traffic jams and stuff. And then that manifests physically. So yeah, I'm totally with you on that. Kachoff Datri says, Jay, a reflection on the bottom of the firmament. We are seeing a hole where you say the plasma shoots out. Ah, oh, man, it's hard. It's hard for me to understand what you're referring to. A reflection on the bottom of the firmament. Okay. There's a reflection like a mirror. We are seeing the hole where you say the plasma shoots out. Oh, you're talking about like, the, that's where the sun, that's that was, what makes the sun. Okay, I'm with you. I'm, I like that. I like that theory. Good, good one. <clears throat> Joni says, Jay, do you think that the 2024 solar eclipse 
that X out of the USA from 2017 to 2024 may have something prophetic to do with, with the plasma apocalypse. Yes, absolutely. Everything does. I think everything does. I, I, should, I should do an intro on my channel where I just let it, let it be known from the start. I believe all is one. So that ultimately, if you're asking deep, like, hey, on the deepest level, is this true? I'm going to say yes every single time. If you ask, do I believe it? I'm going to say there's probably truth to it. So somewhere in there. Heath Taylor says, uh, Demer demerity is real and unreal to those who have no more the nothing. Temerity. I'm going to have to look that up. One sec. Excessive confidence or boldness. All right. So excessive confidence and boldness is real and unreal to those that have no more than nothing. Okay. Yeah. I totally got you. Yeah. Like we have, we're confident, right? Because we don't have anything or we're confident because we understand that we share all things with everyone. And this concept of possession is just in the mind. Everything's being shared. Um, jumping back into the chat. Okay, I think we're kind of winding down. Oh, wait, here's some. Escape from Babylon says, Joan. Oh, no, never mind. Kevin Kruger says, I agree, Jay. Whatever this world is, we might as well enjoy it and be ourselves, regardless of social norms and stuff like that. When it happens, it'll happen. I totally agree. Live life. Live. You know what I mean? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm all for prepping. I'm all for preparing. I'm all for talking about it. I love it. It excites me. I feel like it, it's the salt of the world. I feel like it flavors this bland place that we live in. So I'm all about it. But if you're not all about it, I respect that too. Watch TV, go to work, come home, do your thing. I ain't mad at you. Sorry, had a flashback to a song. Yen Caples says, Jay, you are my favorite truther, the most up-to-date info out there. Sweet, right on. Thank you. It's, I guess... I don't even know what to say to that. It's up to date. It's some. It just comes from above. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes, I, even when I'm researching, like, man, I just I'm put right on such a good path sometimes, and I'm so thankful. Sometimes I just stop my research because it's like all the perfect puzzle pieces are just like sometimes they're just handed right there, and they're like, here's a piece, here's a piece. You want another one? Here's a piece, here's a piece, and I'm like, more. More like Neo when he first learns how to all his training. I'm like, let's do it again. Candy Jones says it's all good. Right on. Thank you. Heath Taylor says, uh, I meant eternity. J Dreamer sending love to all and everything. Your love is received. Thank you. Thank you for your childhood. <laughs> Sheepdog22 says, J Dreamers, what if the sun stops moving across the dome and burns a hole through it? then the world would be depressurized and everyone would get sucked up in the sky. And then we'd have a burnt up hole in the sky, I guess. <laughs> Good question. Good question. Uh, Patricia Tewatu says, yes, thank you. Jay, have you seen God Gel? I, oh, I wish that dude would change his YouTube name just to make it easier on everyone else. I'm just kidding. Not really. Uh, God Gev Lampstay's Crater Earth series on YouTube. Yes, I have. I've totally seen it. Thank you for the shout out. So super appreciate it. Um, I'm trying to get rid of that negative vibe that I have. I don't know why I have a negative vibe right now, but it's just because so many people have seen like, Hey, have you seen this or whatever? And it's m usually because people haven't seen a lot of my other videos, but it's like when you have like a hundred videos and then people in the chat are like, have you seen this guy's theory or whatever? Yes, I totally have. And it's not his theory at all. All of these theories that you hear, the hollow earth, the flat earth, the spherical, all of these different ones, the crater, all of that square, they're old. They're not new. They're being rediscovered by other people, which I'm glad. I'm super glad that you're rediscovering these things too. And I believe that every single one of them is connected. Every single one of them is true. 
Um, I never thought about that theory before now, but it's a good watch for open-minded people. Yes, I totally agree. Check it out. I, I mean, I, I don't know if I agree with the video. I, 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 have, I agree with parts. You know what I mean? I agree with parts. Um, but I know that people get so excited to jump on the latest theories and stuff. You know what I mean? Somebody comes out with a, a new no forests or a new whatever, and I love it too. I do. But I just get like, eh, I, because I don't get hung up on it. Like when I, when I got into like the, the flat earth theory and stuff, I was not somebody who's just like, flat earth flag, everyone. You know what I mean? Like I was excited. I wanted to know more. And then I started asking, what are the implications? And then that started to kind of bother some of the other flat earthers because they had planted their flag and they were stuck in one spot, which is, this is the flat earth theory that, you know, that we believe in and I didn't like it. It was sports all over again for me. So I'm excited for people when they learn about the no forest, when they learn about the fractal verse, when they learn about the plasma apocalypse, when they learn about uh, crater earth or what the moon is and they have all these different wonderful ideas. And I love seeing their childlike excitement as I have had as well. But I don't like to harp on it. I don't like to only just, as, as you may have noticed, my channel talks about all kinds of different stuff. I do reference the plasma apocalypse a lot in essence because it is the source of all of these other things. But that's my cup of tea. All right. Who else we got? Who else we got? Uh, let's see. Oh, Cassiopeia. Thank you. You're super welcome. Oh, the Wheel of Time. You know what, Candy? I tried checking that out and it was, eh, it was good. I only watched like the first season, I think, or a few episodes, but it was just, it was kind of a little on the dramatic drama slow side for me, but it was cool. I like all the precepts and I hear that the book is a billion times better. Heath says, I love your theory. Uh, Jay Dreamers, you're not alone. Sending love. We are learning how to get back to source. Yeah, just be one. Boom, be one. Right? You do, if if there is a source, there's no there's no need to get back to it. You're already there. Patricia Tewitsu says, uh, Jay, sorry, I didn't know, but uh, thank you. No negative meant. I know, I know. You're good. I totally love everything I'm hearing from you. Oh, sweet, good. Okay, sweet. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that we understand each other. You're good. I'm good too. All right. Team Fontaine says, Jay, when I was young, I heard this song. I didn't understand a thing about it, but I was like, why do I like this song? Me too. And thousands upon thousands of other people too. It resonates. It's speaking to your spirit. Now you just need to balance out the mind with the spirit to reconcile them and bring them together. Reconcile what the Spirit is saying to with what your eyes are telling you. Kevin Kruger says, Sylvan lining video anytime soon. Nope, not anytime soon. Sorry, but um, stepping outside of Jay Dreamers on YouTube, um, I've got so much drama, like, you know, because I'm, I'm going to court for custody issues and stuff because someone else is not a nice person and... They love breaking my heart and using using that against me to to try to take my family away from me. So I'm I'm struggling, you know, with my own depression and my own anxiety and stuff at the moment. But I also am trying to work on flushing it out. I'll be honest. So I'm I'm just like many of you, okay, in in that respect, okay. I'm not just happy. A uh, freaking Red Bull drinking YouTuber who's just always doing something exciting or, you know, I'm not constantly just, I mean, I am studying a lot, right? <clears throat> but when I'm not, um, I'm shopping for groceries. I'm putting gas in the car. I'm dealing with my own drama in my personal life. I'm feeling lonely. I'm wishing I had more friends. I'm like thinking about how sucky the world is and I'm trying to stay positive and you know, snap myself out of it and I'm cleaning my house and I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff just like that. No worries. No worries. It's okay. It's just, you know, it's something I need to learn. Something I need to, to get through is because I've, I've, I've traditionally handled things not too great when they don't go my way. Like when things don't go according to plan, I get really frazzled. So this is probably life offering me an opportunity to overcome that. So I'm trying to accept that. 
Steven says, Jay, The Witcher show is cool. I totally agree. I think that's an awesome show. I haven't seen all of it, but I sometimes I watch a show enough to get the gist of it. You know what I can't wait to see? <gasps> oh my God. You know what I can't wait to see? Why am I so tiny on the screen right now? That's, that looks so weird, right? Hold on. Let me make me bigger. One side will make you bigger. There we go. That looks better. Okay, cool. Anyways, uh, what was I saying? The Witcher. Oh, I want to see the new Love, Death, and Robots. They're coming out with a new season. And Stranger Things, even though I don't really like movies or TV shows where they focus on a group of children, but they wait so long to do sequels or they do so many that those children grow into adults, clearly. And then they still try to portray them as children. I don't like that. You know what I mean? So I don't know if Stranger Things is going to do that or not. Um, I am looking forward to Stranger Things even though it's just the apocalypse over and over and over and over. So I'm kind of getting the gist of that one. But the new, like two of my favorite shows, or maybe three, I'll throw out three. Electric Dreams, awesome. Um, Black Mirror, awesome. Twilight Zone, awesome. And um, Love, Death, and Robots. Oh, and there's another one too, but I can't remember its name. It's so weird. Damn, I can't remember, but it's, it's the one that has those infomercials that totally go wrong every time. There's like little infomercial commercial breaks and it's like totally a, a like a horrific experience. Um, I forgot what that series is called, but that one's pretty cool too. <clears throat> All right. Well, hey, I, I know there's other people in the chat. Um, I love you guys. Thank you so much. If, if you don't like the longer videos because sometimes it can be intimidating and you're like, man, I don't have three hours to watch this. Watch as much as you would like or go check out my playlist of short videos. Quite often, I'll be talking about something that's really in-depth and later on, I'll go and make a short condensed version of it of, that's like a five to 10 minute video. So you can actually find the short condensed version that I call a breadcrumb on my short videos playlist. You know, if you want to learn, get straight to the point of, you know, who are the elves? You don't need, you don't need to listen to me for three hours. You can just go watch my, who are the elves video and learn it in two minutes. You know what I mean? And I, I make a lot of those. So check out that playlist. If you're into the shorter videos, if not check out, join us here any other time. Oh, the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally should do the moon. Good one, good one. All right, sweet. Well, I'm going to wrap things up. Thanks so much. It's great meeting a lot of the newer people, and it's good to see a lot of the veterans, uh, the more salty of the crowd, pop in as usual. Well, hey, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, we're going to do it. Our next video is going to be Amnesia Island, so I'm looking forward to that. Until then, I'm Jay Dreamer saying good vibes and goodbye. So hard to